All right, so we are in Illustrator. I'm using the type tool in Illustrator. And I am playing with the sizing and the kerning, the space between letters, just to get something close. But one big problem with this type tool is it's all on a straight line. And I want mine to curve, right? So this is another great aspect of Illustrator. I'm going to save that one. So I have the melting here. I'm going to make a new layer above it and just squeeze it in. I'm going to lock these. Remember, I use layers to help kind of protect it. Then I'm just going to use my pencil tool, my favorite tool. And I'm going to draw the arc that I want for my text. If I want it to be perfect, I can do it with the pen tool. But I want it to be a little off kilter. And I want to make sure that arc is big enough for my text. Next, I'm going to go to the type tool. I'm going to open up the drawer and I'm going to click on the type on path tool. This is wonderful. This is not something Photoshop has. This is why you want to do type in Illustrator. So if you do the type on path tool, click on the thing you just drew. I will turn off. And then you will see that it's, it's starting to put Latin text on that curve. I'm going to delete that, and instead I'm going to go to my melting layer. I'm going to select that, use my type tool to select it all, copy it, lock it here, go back to my type on path tool, and paste it in. Okay. So now it's no longer straight. Still the end, though, is on a different register, right? But I'm going to, going to play with that later. I'll show you how. Okay, so that's good for melting. What's the next thing? Yep, let's go with that. So once I have melting figured out, remember these are all still type layers. I might make my own layer for them and move them into it just to kind of organize it. So layer five, it's on the very top, it's melting. Lock that. It's a lot like animation. You have to think in really organized ways. Okay, macabre, I don't know that I want macabre to be rounded. I might want it straight. I'm just not sure. But I know I don't want that typeface. So I'm going to use the regular type tool. And I could try Equestria. And I can kind of see how the different variations work. But maybe it's a little bit too much the same. I, I mean, I guess that's the closest. Right? But if I want to try something else, I can always just select it all, copy, edit, paste in place. So I have another copy of it, turn the one off, and then try another typeface here. So what else do I have? I have the My Little Pony. I have Cream Puff. Try MLP. There's that. There's this. That's pretty funny. Especially if I change each of those hearts into a little skull. That could work. Let's see, let's try Cream Puff, which is a script. Yeah, that's a little hard to read. What if I do MLB? or my little MLP, sorry, the second version, but I use lowercase. That's starting to work. Let's take the point size down. Let's play with the, the kerning, especially with between the A's and the C's. Tighten that up a little bit. So with lowercase letters, kerning is more important. And the way to think of it is that you want each letter that's the same size, the same point size, to take up this, to think of it like it's submerged in a glass of water. So if each of these letters is submerged in a glass of water, 
you want there to be the same amount of water in each cup. And you want all the cups to look like they're at the same level. Now, sometimes that requires more space around them. Like for the bee, the bee is already taking up a lot of the water in that cup, so it requires a little bit more space around it to have the same amount of water. The R requires much less space around it because the R doesn't take up as much. So I, I can reduce the kerning on that. And it will fill up nicely. So that's kind of a nice readable spacing. Okay, now just to review, if I want this to be on a curve, I can lock it, make a new layer, drag it in on top, and then draw. Maybe I don't even want just a curve. Maybe I want a little swoosh. And then go to the Type on Path tool. Right? And then I want to copy this type solution onto that path, onto that empty path. Using the type on path tool, click on it, and then paste. Like that. Now, what I love is because it's on a vector path, I can use the pencil tool and I can redraw that path. So I can actually say, no, better yet, I want it like this. Like that. It will give you this little plus sign sometimes when it, it can't figure out how to make it all fit with the angle. Like maybe I don't have enough space in between. So then I go back to the type on path tool and I mess with it some more. So all these different variations, remember command um, Z gets you back. It can help you figure that out. So let's first kind of curve it down. There we go. And now I can just use the large selection tool and I can tilt the whole thing. And I can stretch it. Check that out. These are ways to customize it while it's still a type tool where you can still edit your typeface, your spelling, all that good stuff. So if I want to make it a little bit smaller, just hold down Option and Shift, maybe a little narrower. Okay, I'm liking that. So let's see, how does that look with, yeah, that's readable. Is your I an exclamation point? It is an exclamation point because the upper the uppercase I was actually a lowercase I. So let me show you how I fix that now. Okay, now that I have that type. I would just use a lowercase L and lower numbers. So I've got two. There is no lowercase L. The lowercase L is a capital L. So in these typefaces, little things happen. So now I am going to duplicate these whole layers, right? So copy the melting, paste it in place onto a new layer. And then, this is just to be safe, then turn off the old melting. And then with the large selection tool, with that layer selected, just right click on it and say create outlines. What? <laughs> Oh, because I have one that's not showing. So I just want this one. Create outlines. Now, it's not very dramatic because it's in yellow, so you can't see it very well. But now this is a vector. It's just like live tracing and expanding. With no errors, except that you'll see that these fonts, these typefaces that are designed, often could be improved. <laughs> So now that it's its own layer, what can I do? I can use the pencil tool and I can edit it. I can improve it. I can make it my own. Now, how do I make that into an eye? Simple. I use the 
the small selection tool. Right? I can use the lasso, lasso around this dot and just delete it completely. Use the small selection tool, use the pencil tool. I can, I can draw a bottom for it. I can use, once it's selected, I can use the large selection tool and stretch it out. Play with spacing, play with its angle. And if it's, if it's not smooth enough, I can use tools like the smooth tool to reduce anchor points, make it look a little bit more professional as a hand done typeface. Okay, now I can also do things like select just the M, move it, angle it, Enlarge it to fit my purpose, and then use the small selection tool. Redraw it. I'm going to use my stylus for this. But I'm going to change this in quite a bit. I'm going to let's point go like that, and it's going to come down. And it's going to go out like so, and then hover back like this, and then go straight up, and then go down, and it will all work as long as I start on the path and end on the path. Right? Now I have my pencil set to be pretty accurate, <laughs> and I probably shouldn't for doing type. But instead of redoing it, I can just use the smooth tool and smooth that up. Okay, now <laughs> the M looks a little strange, but I'm liking it. I'll keep working with it. Now I'm going to take this middle section. This is a little tougher when you have script text that outlines and it's all overlapping, but mine are distinct. And I can grow it. I can stretch it. What I cannot do is fix spelling errors. I can rotate it. I can even do this thing where I use my lasso and I lasso just corners. And then I use the small selection tool and just tug. Oh, I'm gonna do it. It's so hard to get the right selections. But if you use the lasso tool, you can select multiple anchors at once. And then if you hit one of those anchors and you start tugging, it will warp it for you. See that? So instead of just moving one point, it was moving multiple points. So I'm going to do that on both ends. I have to fix the uh, G. So let's do that with the G now. Make it nice and big and probably a lot narrower. Use a large selection tool, enlarge it, put it over here. Again, I am using a typeface, but I am inspired heavily by my sketch. As loose as it was, it was my own. And any time I can use the lasso and edit one of these individually. Okay, and then that gives me a lot more space to play with these. I'm just trying to get vector type that I'm happy with. Now I've got quite a few going. I don't get to use the type on path tool anymore because it's no longer a type tool. So instead I can change the, the level of each letter individually. So if, if I need to bring the in down, I just select it using the lasso tool and use the large type tool and I can just use my arrow keys and bring it down into what I'm thinking for my blocking. Same thing for the eye. 
So this 